Hello model railroaders, here are 10 tips for laying flex track that I wish I knew when I first got started in model railroading. Each of these tips will help you avoid derailments, costly redos of your track work, and leave your rails looking like they've been laid by a professional modeler. Tip number one, if you're using cork roadbed, be sure to sand it down. You'll want to sand down any imperfections of the seams of your cork roadbed as well as any high or low spots that are due to your benchwork being uneven. So you wanna make sure that you get those sanded down smooth and level so that your track will set correctly on top of the roadbed, leaving it perfectly level so there's no unintended uncouplings of your locomotives and rolling stock. Also, when you use cork roadbed, it leaves this little ledge on the edge of your shoulders for your sub road bed. You'll want to make sure to sand those off too. By sanding it down, you'll have a nice profile for laying ballast and doing scenery work later. Tip number two, if you're using more than one piece of flex track for a curve, you want to make sure that you solder those multiple pieces of track together before bending it around your corner and laying your curved track. The reason that you want to do this is that by soldering your rails together, you ultimately create one long piece of flex track, preventing any kinks in the joints. It will also help with the rail conductivity and ultimately will ensure smooth running of your locomotives and rolling stock around the rails. Tip number three, file any burrs left behind from your rail nippers when you're cutting your flex track. If you're cutting your flex track to length and you're using a tool like a Zuron rail nipper, you wanna make sure that even on the straight side that you had cut, you file off any burrs on the web of or the foot of the rail. This will help you get your rail joiners smoothly onto the rail and prevent you from stabbing the ends of your fingers with the rail joiners. Ask me how I know. Tip number four. Solder your feeder wires to the underside of your rails. By soldering the wires on the bottom of the rails, you hide them from sight when you bring in the ballast and scenery. You won't have any unsightly solder blobs in the web of your rail where your feeder wires have been essentially exposed to the world. Do this before you lay your track to your roadbed and make sure you pre-drill holes in your roadbed so you can feed the wires through and not have any problems while installing your track. It's a quick little tip that leaves your feeder wires hidden and looks great when scenery and ballast are put over the top of the rails. Tip number five, make sure all of your joints and curves are in gauge. I like to use the National Model Railroad Association or the NMRA track gauge to ensure that my track gauge is correct. I also like to use these track alignment tools to ensure that any joints that I have are properly spaced and there aren't any kinks within the rails. If I do identify kinks, I use PC board ties soldered to the rails and then glued down to the roadbed to ultimately straighten out any kinked or out of gauge track. Tip number six. When gluing down your track, use adhesives sparingly. You'll see a lot of model railroaders use like a caulk gun to glue down their track work. I prefer to use a little bit of glue and a putty knife. I know it may be slower, but in the long run, you won't have unsightly gobs of track adhesive poking up through your ties, hanging out on the shoulders of your roadbed, or even worse, sticking inside the webs of your rails. And then when I'm done, I make sure that I clean off all adhesive from my ties, my rails, and the shoulders of my road bed. Keeping it clean is going to leave you set up well for some good looking scenery after your track's been glued down. Tip number seven, add some basic details to your rails. Adding joint bars is something that you can easily do with just some super glue and some patience. And you can also damage your ties or add molded damage ties that I've created here to your rails to give the impression that the ties are pretty decrepit and needing of maintenance. 
it's a quick little detail that you can add that really brings a realism to your model rails. Tip number eight, make sure that all of your ties are spaced relatively evenly. If you have ties bunched together from, the fl from flexing of the flex track, you want to make sure that you get them spaced out. You can even cut them away and shimmy a tie in later, but make sure that they're not all bunched up together. Typically, typically, real railroads don't have ties basically placed right on top of each other. You want to make sure that they're spaced out before you glue them into place. Tip number nine, use a straight edge to get your straight track perfectly straight. I like to use a metal straight edge and run it up against the side of my rails to make sure that any track that I need to be perfectly straight is straight before I glue it down. So as you can see, I'm just pushing that rail up against the straight edge and working out all the bends and kinks. Tip number 10, test your track before you glue it down. I typically like to run rolling stock over the top of the rails and see how well it glides before I glue any of my track work down. I also like to hook up the feeder wires and test the locomotives on it as well. I'll even pull trains over the top of it to ensure that they track smoothly and that I don't have any unforeseen problems with the rails, causing derailments or even having some conductivity issues. And I'm gonna give you guys one bonus tip here. So the one bonus tip that I'm gonna leave with you is get a dehumidifier for your train room. Dehumidifiers help with the climate control and can essentially keep the humidity in the room where your layout is constant. This will prevent any sudden expansion or contraction of your bench work and sub road bed that could lead to the tracks becoming either kinked by getting pushed together or separating by having some contraction of the wood that you used in your bench work. So get a dehumidifier, you'll thank me later. Hey Model Railroaders, if you're anything like me, I bet you guys love good Model Railroading YouTube content. So if you do, make sure you check out the Second Section podcast. Mike Ostertag and I host a twice monthly podcast where it's just regular guys coming together to talk about model railroading. We'll talk about products and manufacturers that are in the hobby. We also learn about short lines throughout the United States and Canada. We'll have guests on from time to time that share their experience of modeling in our great hobby. And we also have our community getting involved in the show too, where the section crew shares with us, the hosts, what's on their workbench. So check out our YouTube channel, the Second Section Podcast, or you can find us on the internet at the Second Section Podcast.com. <laughs> That's Split Rock. He gets me. Check out the Second Section Podcast episode where we have Boomer Dioramas on the show sharing with us and the audience his modeling secrets. Till next time, keep her a notch eight.